The process of selecting, buying and finally using a smartphone today is mostly seamless and worry-free. And I genuinely believe that there are no bad phones in 2024. There are great ones, there are good ones and maybe sometimes mediocre ones. But just a few years ago, the competition was way more intense. And in a bit to stay ahead of the curve, brands started pushing the throttle hard. A little too hard, if you ask me. And therefore, they ended up in embarrassing crashes and embroiled themselves in what can be considered as the biggest smartphone controversies of the modern era. So I'm going to take a trip down memory lane and look at five of the biggest smartphone related controversies in modern era. So come along with me for the ride if you are here for the first time. I'm Ershad, you're watching Track and Take English, your destination for detailed, incisive gadget reviews. In the past, time and again, brands have tried to pass off photos captured by professional cameras as photos captured by phones they were launching. And the biggest culprit here was Huawei. Firstly, the company admitted to using a professionally shot picture using a DSLR for marketing purposes when it was launching the Huawei P9. I mean, yes, the Huawei P9 did come with Leica branding, but this was taking things a little too far. They did it again with the 5X telephoto camera, which was introduced for the very first time on the Huawei P30 Pro. In their teaser, they showcased images shot from the P30 Pro, but they were actually shot by a professional photographer and they had reused those images. And that professional photographer had used a DSLR. Huawei did sheepishly acknowledge later that they were just licensing the image and using it to showcase the capabilities of the telephoto camera inside the Huawei P30 Pro. And if you thought that was it, well, no they went ahead and made the blunder once again. They were caught faking again with the Huawei Nova 3. This time, to promote the capabilities of the selfie camera of the Nova 3, they actually used a professional DSLR to capture the selfie. Not just Huawei, even Samsung was caught once for misleading marketing. And the fun fact is Samsung was caught faking it by the photographer herself who shot the photo. She actually did a reverse search on an image that was mysteriously licensed by somebody that she did not know. And she ended up spotting it being used for the promotion of the then Samsung Galaxy A8 Star. And Samsung was using this to promote the quality of the blur effect but she was actually laughing at the quality of the Photoshop that they did. Thankfully, brands have become more careful after that and there hasn't been a case of misleading marketing as such. The only one that comes to mind recently is when a Redditor actually proved that the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra could capture images of the moon by just looking at a picture of the moon. Now, Samsung claimed this is how the algorithm actually works and this is not necessarily misleading marketing itself. Now, whether this is controversial or not is still up for debate because Samsung claims that their algorithm is tuned to work in a way where, you know, the moment it spots the moon, it enhances the image and makes it look better. They had a long blog post about it as well. Now, with the advent of generative edit or generative AI related edits on photographs, Samsung's being even more careful because with the Galaxy S24 Ultra, when you make a generative edit, it now adds a watermark and it also has a metadata information saying that the image has has been edited using artificial intelligence. But yeah, thank God that fake marketing has now reduced drastically and brands are being more careful now. Your favorite smartphone company has also been faking benchmarks and almost every single one of them has been found indulging in this malpractice. It actually started when Anand Tech found out that the Samsung Galaxy S4 with the Exynos 5 back in the day was cheating on benchmarks to actually attain a higher performance score. In fact, Anand Tech later did a more deeper investigation and found out that quite a few devices that were launched during that time were faking on benchmarks. And this list includes phones like the LG G2, the Galaxy Note 3, and even the HTC One. And you know what? All of these phones cheated on Android 2. Fast forward to 2018 and, you know, Android Authority ran a very detailed investigation where it found out that phones like the Huawei P20 Pro and the Honor Play were actually cheating on benchmarks and boosting the score by up to 21%, which is crazy. Until now, it was about 3 to 5%. But 21%? That was nuts. In fact, Anand Tech had run an investigation prior to Android Authority and it had found out that Huawei and Honor were cheating on benchmarks. This actually caused 3D Mark to delist phones like the Huawei P20, the P20 Pro and the Nova 3 from its app back in the day. And it's not just phone brands. Anand Tech went after the chip company MediaTek as well. In that investigation, the publication found out that MediaTek was actually whitelisting certain benchmarking apps which would trigger a special sports mode to you know boost performance and get higher scores in benchmarks and even oneplus was caught cheating on benchmarks with the oneplus 9 and the oneplus 9 pro and a big chunk of the benchmark cheating happened 
back in the day by enabling a special performance mode to boost the benchmark performance, just like how MediaTek was doing it. Now, what does speaking of benchmarks mean for the end consumer? That's also very important to note. Benchmarks may not be important to you, but it does have an impact on your usage. Firstly, you will not get the same performance headroom when you're using the phone and that is being promised by the brand in the marketing material for whenever they launch the phone with these benchmark numbers. And of course, it's misleading, right? These phones will not be able to give you the performance that the benchmarks achieve in day-to-day -day usage. And of course, in sustained day-to-day -day usage, you will definitely not see the results. Now, before I move on to the controversy, most of the fake DSLR photos and the fake benchmarks happened around the 2016, 2017, 2018 era. Now, if you think that was coincidence, well, not really. It was basically brands trying to fool customers into thinking that their phone was the best at camera and performance. But soon they realized that we phone nerds are the most alert customers. No sir, you cannot fool us. Remember the Freedom 251? Well, if you don't, allow me to enthrall you with the story of the biggest smartphone controversy to ever hit India. In fact, it was big globally as well. So a company by the name of Ringing Bells run by cute Mohit was actually promising the world's cheapest smartphone priced at just rupees 251. You didn't even need to be smart at that time to figure out that they were definitely faking it. In fact, Ringing Bells is clearly the attempt of trying to fake it till you make it, but they never made it. The first whiff of the scam was identified by media folks who were shown prototype units and apparently they were rebadged units of a phone brand called Adcom. So bad was the situation that Ringing Bells actually used a whitener to wipe off the name. How stupid. And imagine the audacity of the company to actually do that and fool, you know, potential customers. In fact, Adcom threatened to sue Ringing Bells for this, but I'm guessing that nothing happened, primarily because the next phone that they handed out to media was not actually a rebranded Adcom phone, and it looked completely different from what the original Freedom 251 was. Later, Ringing Bells was raided by government officials, and they started asking the company, why aren't your phones BIS certified? And BIS certification is needed by almost every single phone brand, even today, if they want to launch it in India. And that certification takes a lot of time, at least a month, a little more than that as well sometimes. In fact, the telecom ministry at that time conducted an investigation and found out that the Freedom 251 cannot be sold for anything less than 2300 or 2400 rupees. 251 was completely out of question. Obviously, what happened was Karma and Ringing Bells director Mohit Goel was arrested and giving us freedom from this scam. One of the biggest controversies of modern times has to be when Samsung Galaxy Note 7 was recalled and Samsung had to stop selling it. And the reason for it? a manufacturing defect. And this manufacturing defect actually caused a lot of Galaxy Note 7 devices to overheat, combust, and even explode. The battery inside the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 was produced by Samsung's very own Samsung SDI. And there was a design flaw where the electrodes at the top right of the battery were susceptible to bending. And this weakened separation between the positive and the negative tabs actually caused thermal runway and short circuits as well. This is why it was overheating, combusting, and of course exploding as well. And because of this, the Galaxy Note 7 ended up being a hazmat product. It was considered hazardous and banned from flights as well. I remember seeing those notices when I was flying. But thankfully, Samsung acknowledged the error and has come back strong from that time. Now the Note lineup has merged with the S lineup. In fact, Samsung is also currently the leader of folding phones in the world. So all's well that ends well, I suppose. Now, while the Galaxy Note 7's flaw was slightly more global, there was something similar that was happening close to home as well with the OnePlus Nord 2. Remember those Nord 2's blasting? How that problem fizzled out without a trace and not many people are talking about it? Do you think that OnePlus faced quality control issues in assembling the Nord 2 in India? Or do you think this was a smear campaign by the competition to derail the progress of OnePlus because OnePlus was actually ruling at that time with the sales of the Nord 2? Let me know in the comment section below. So we are finally here, the biggest controversy of them all. I'm sure that until now, you guys must be thinking Aisha's only talking about Android phones and their controversies. Well, it's not like the iPhones didn't have controversies. In fact, the iPhone related controversies were the biggest ones. And I'm going to be talking about two of the biggest controversies and all of them were, you know, labeled as some gate. So I'm going to be talking about the battery gate and of course, the bend gate. Now, battery gate was this term used to describe what Apple did with a lot of older iPhones. So basically, after iOS 10.1.1, a lot of iPhone 6 and 6 plus users started complaining about 
their phones slowing down. Apparently, Apple was doing that on purpose because under high load and high pressure, because of the degrading batteries of older iPhones, these phones had a tendency to shut down. So with this update, Apple was throttling performance on older iPhones to ensure longevity. Apple did acknowledge the issue and they told CNET that they're going to be issuing a software feature where you can see the battery health degradation really soon. And they would do this to preserve system stability and prevent unnecessary shutdowns. Apple actually said that replacing the battery on the iPhone 6 and the 6X would, uh, you know, bring back and restore performance. And it announced a discount of $50 from $79 to $29 for replacing the battery itself. By the way, you can actually see your battery health on your current iPhone right now within the settings app. This is something that a lot of uh, users like doing these days after one year what is the state of the battery health they like to check that if the battery has degraded or not and apple was forced to do this and thankfully it has happened because it's for the benefit of the consumer by the way a lawsuit was filed against apple in 2020 and only recently have you know users started getting a 92 dollar compensation from the company but when it comes to gates and controversies the bend gate has to be the most controversial one of the lot and apple didn't even admit that this was a problem. Before foldable phones became a thing, the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus could bend. <laughs> if I were to put it funnily. It all started when Lou from Unbox Therapy actually bended an iPhone 6 with his bare hands. I think it's still the most popular video on his channel, if I'm not wrong. In fact, some users were also reporting that their phones were bending inside their back pockets. But you know what? Apple didn't acknowledge the issue, saying that oh, they got only nine returns or nine complaints, and that that this was a very extremely rare case of a problem. But you know what? Apple actually knew that the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus were more prone to bending than previous models of iPhones. And this was revealed in a lawsuit against Apple regarding some touchscreen failure back in 2018. Now, while Apple did brush Bendgate under the rug, it did spawn one of the most popular and most loved channels of recent times, Generic Everything. Today, Zach from Generic Everything bends every single phone and torture tests each one of them to find out the structural rigidity and the durability, and it does all of this scientifically. So what's the moral of the story after listening to all of these controversies? Honestly, not much. But what I'd advise is just do your due diligence before buying a smartphone and, you know, believing every single marketing speak out there. In case of genuine quality control problems, brands do address it. For example, what Samsung did with the Galaxy Note 7. But do keep an eye out for controversies on the next smartphone that you are going to buy. By the way, here's a bonus controversy before I leave. Talk, calling it a bonus controversy sounds extremely wrong. But anyway, the point is that recently OnePlus falsely marketed or you know, wrongly marketed the OnePlus 12 R's 256 GB variant as UFS 4.0 storage, where it indeed is UFS 3.1 storage. Now, a lot of people ended up buying the 256 GB variant, the higher variant for a higher price, just seeing the, you know, fast speed of the phone, fast storage speed of the phone. But yeah, I mean, they've acknowledged the error and apparently they're also going to make amends really soon. So I hope this video was slightly different, slightly hot key, like you would say in Hindi. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, do give it a thumbs up, do share it with your friends and of course subscribe to track and take english and i'll see you guys in the next one until then keep tracking and stay safe